Hey everyone, today we are going to do another case study type video where we will be following two lizards that need surgery, including this poor bearded dragon who needs her foot amputated. Our first lizard case today is this leopard gecko named Mag Magara? Magara? How would you pronounce that? Magara. Magara, okay. Magara here has a lump, or she came into our rescue with a lump under her left eye. I honestly don't know what it is, but she has been seen by our vet once already, and he recommended that we make an official appointment to have her sedated so he can look a little bit closer and see what it is and see if he can remove it. So I don't know what this one's uh, issue technically is, but we're gonna find out soon, hopefully. And then this bearded dragon, her name is Mary. We have had this girl for a while and she is just a genetic mess, this poor thing. This is a silky bearded dragon, so she has no scales. The scaleless gene is just called silky in bearded dragons. And although it's, they can live a totally normal life other than needing their skin moisturized, similar to like a sphinx cat would, she has had some other health issues too it, during the time that we've had her. She came in with an eye issues and our vet took a look at it and determined it's like an old eye injury that now requires her to have daily eye drops, the poor thing. She's also sensitive, like other silkies, to drier habitat, so we keep her on like moistened puppy pads to increase humidity, which sounds weird for a bearded dragon, but it helps their skin and it helps them stay hydrated. But really the biggest issue she has right now are with her extremities. Her back foot here, randomly while we've had her, started becoming swollen and going to cry and she is acting a bit lethargic as a result too. So we started her on antibiotics and anti-inflammatory meds and it just doesn't seem to be helping. So our vet recommended we bring her in to officially have this foot amputated. So that's the big thing that Mary, the bearded dragon, needs done today. We're actually going to bring her in today to the vet for surgery, but also her front legs don't look very good. Like her toes almost look like these are going necrotic almost. Maybe that's just her coloration though. I don't know. Uh, this side for sure, she has some necrotic toe tips. She's just a genetic, er, a sad genetic health mess. I, I don't know how else to put it here. She's also a bit underweight as you can see. She's got some hip bones that are prominent. Silky dragons do seem to look more underweight even if they are a proper weight just because the scales seem to like blend or contour their overall body shape very well. So when they don't have scales you see every little detail and they do look underweight even if they aren't. But in this case she is underweight. She's been treated for coccidia, for parasites multiple times. It's just one thing after another, I swear. But hopefully getting her foot amputated will help in this case, and then we can hopefully finally get her adopted out. But first things first, you need surgery. All right, we are back from the vet, and both surgeries were successful. Actually, all oh. three. Oh my gosh, all three. Yes, we, well, okay, so we added our male Argentine boa ember to this vet visit because he had a lump under his chin. Turned out he had a tumor growing inside of his mouth attached to his jugular vein. So that was a surgery that took Dr. Gates like three hours to do. And it wasn't even one we were planning on doing today. We just thought, oh, you know, he's got a weird lump. What is it? Yeah, this massive tumor that was apparently his most difficult surgery ever. <laughs> so ember now holds the record for Dr. Gates's most difficult yep. surgery. Anyway, Anyway, he is not part of this video. He's taken care of though now. This video is focusing on two lizards instead. So let's start with Megara, the leopard gecko. Hello. So this girl, turns out, she had a growth inside the roof of her mouth. So Dr. Gates sedated her and opened her up and essentially, let's see if I can open her mouth for you, which- like, No, I just had to have my mouth open know, all day. I'm sorry. If you guys ever need to open a leopard gecko's mouth, just put a finger on one side and then your nail on the other. And just the tiniest bit of pressure causes them to open wide. There we go. Sometimes. Oh, oh, can you see anything in there? No, it's actually, it looks already healed up. Man, yeah. he just did that yesterday too. So essentially she just had like a, what appeared to be a growth in the roof of her mouth. And what he did was he sedated her so he could open her mouth, went in, kind of inspected it, you know, opened up the tissue. And it was just a calcified ball in Pussy the- Pussy hard ball. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That he was just able to like remove completely and then seal her, her, her the roof of her mouth shut again, yeah. from what I understand. So she will be on some general antibiotics now for a little while. We're gonna give her some TMS, which is a great antibiotic for little lizards like this. It's not too harsh on them like ceftazidime is. And hopefully that'll encourage her to eat a bit too, cause she is a bit on the thin side. She also needs vitamin A. 
She does need vitamin A. Yeah, she squints her eyes a lot, especially her right eye. Oh. But yeah, this girl should hopefully be more willing to eat now that that deposit has been removed. So she will hopefully be on the mend. So Hooray. take a look. She's pretty thin right now, but hopefully soon we have some weight put on her now that the issue is fixed. And next up is Mary the Bearded Dragon. Oh no, there's no foot there anymore. She doesn't have that foot anymore. Hi, you already are acting so much better. So that is apparently mouth gaped at under the vet. a basking spot. Yeah, so. which if you see a bearded dragon mouth gaping, it means they're really happy and they're like the ideal basking temperature. And she was doing that at the vet after her surgery. So that is fantastic. Uh, he did remove, I think, yep, you can tell right here. You can see one little stitch. Uh, actually, this one too. It looks like he removed the ends. Yeah, there was two dead toes there. Yep, those had to come off and she was already sedated, so why not? And the big thing though was this leg being removed or actually her foot more like. He removed it from her knee down essentially but that should help her feel a lot better because she won't have this infected leg bothering her anymore. So yeah, now she gets to be on antibiotic injections as well as we're going to be putting some silver sulfadiazine cream on the uh, stitches here, just on the wound basically. And then she actually needs, she has some eyelid issues, like some permanent damage to her eyelids, which is requiring eye drops every day. And that's just going to be her new normal are the eye drops. Yep. Yeah. So she'll have to go home with somebody who's willing to do a lot of yeah. gender love and care with her. A lot of TLC yeah. for this scaleless bearded dragon. The poor thing. But we are going to get them all set up and comfortable now that they have made it through their surgeries and we'll check in on them in a little while. And actually we were just told by Haley that she's due for a Seftaz shot today which is perfect timing. We'll just show you that on screen here. So we'll, uh, this is what I do when I have to do a one person injection. I like to hold the foot in between a couple fingers and then injection goes into the bicep or tricep up. We're gonna go here. There's no scales to evade yeah, on it's her. Really easy with them. Yeah. Ta-da! There you go. You took that so well. <laughs> She's like, oh, I hate you guys so much. Girl, you're done with surgery. You're done with your injection for today. Now we're gonna leave you alone for a couple days. Well, other than meds, and then your next injection, and then more injections, and then silver. And okay, she's got a long ways to go. But she gets food during that time too. She does get food. If she starts eating again, because she hasn't been wanting to eat recently, I'm sure because of her leg. If she eats, that'll be a great sign. So let's hope she starts eating again too. <laughs> Okay, it's been a week. It's update time for Megara. Hi, look at you. Your eyes look good. There's no more lump. And guess who's now eating on her own? Yeah, you officially don't need to be tongue fed anymore. Hi, cutie. And because of that and her eating habits uh, improving, she doesn't have prominent hip bones. She's gaining weight. You look so good. And patient number two, obviously in a hospital tank, this is not like a permanent enclosure, is Mary. Hi, look at you. You look so much better. She's like moving around and basking now. Let's take a look. Oh, her little nubbin. It's actually healing quite well. We've been applying silver daily. She's been getting her antibiotic shots and she ate a Pinky Mouse the other day, which is one of her favorite foods that she wasn't eating a few weeks ago or before surgery. So that tells us she is feeling much better too. Look at that side eye. Hi cutie, you're such a good girl. How do your toes look by the way? Oh, those are healing up nicely too. You're such a good girl, Mary. Here, I'll place you up there. And look, you know, you can kind of see your hip bones, but not nearly as much as before. So I think that surgery is exactly what this little girl needed. So we're gonna check back in, I guess another week or so and give another update. Okay, I have exciting news about Megara, the leopard gecko, which this is obviously just a hospital bin. It makes it easier to clean, sterilize, and for her to find her food. Uh, but the good news is, Someone's done with her antibiotics after surgery and take a look. We have no swelling coming back. A little bit of scar tissue, but that's to be expected. She is cleared for adoption. She does look a little bit on the thinner side still, but she's not, you know, too thin to adopt out. She just needs a loving home. So maybe I will do one more update when she finds that adoptive home. Guess what? Today, Mary gets her stitches pulled yeah, out. Yeah, look what? at those little stitches. Look at how well her little nose been healed. Yeah. It looks so good. And she's eating all of her favorite foods Yep, again. she's basking she's finally. She's basking, mouth open, she's active, she's gained weight back. So yeah, that was exactly what she needed was that leg amputation. So now we're gonna take out these stitches. 
Let's see. I wish I had tiny scissors. I'm realizing that I don't. Wait, we do. We yeah. do? Ed was right. right. We do have little ones. Yeah, little, little surgical scissors. Yes, I forgot. We have a whole vet kit here. Okay, so I have to find a good spot to cut this. Since she has a bit of silver kind of, not caked on, but surrounding the stitches, we're just going to pull on them or tug them a little bit to loosen them from that silver. And silver sulfadiazine is actually what we use for open wounds here. It seems to heal them really well. It's actually recommended by our vet. That's how we got introduced to it in the first place. There we go. Now that those stitches are loosened up a bit, I actually can see this where the stitches are a little bit better. So I'm gonna go. There's a bit of scabbing, so it's kind of hard to tell. Well, not quite. Do you where need like one? another hand to like... Possibly, yeah. Can you pull that second one? Yes, that one. Just tug it a little bit. Okay, so now hopefully this one pulls out. There, we, there go. we go. Beautiful. Just have to see where they're all connected here. Yep. Let's see where... Okay, that one's connected right here. There we go. Ta-da! So it can get a little tricky pulling stitches because after they scab over them, it's hard to see where okay, the stitches are. You might be able to get it out if you pull the right way, like pull towards you. Yeah, or let's see, where are we? Oh yeah, we're, this last stitch is under a pretty big scab, so it's anchored in there quite well. There, there we, we go. go. Ta-da! Hooray, we got all the stitches out. Nice, so as you can see, there's a bit of scabbing still, and actually I think I see the thread of part of one more stitch. Oh, it's an entire stitch. Oh. Really hidden under that scab. Okay, we have one more to cut. Now you can see the triangle. Cut one side, we'll pull through. Oop. There we go. All right, she tugged it out herself. Yeah. Good job, girl. All right, now so it that's looks all... like we have a little bit of oozing, not much though, so we're gonna put silver on it here one more time and let that kind of heal on its own now. But yeah, the main wound where she was amputated at this knee definitely seems healed, so let's get some silver on this guy. Here's the uh, silver that we used, and actually this bottle was sent to us off of our Amazon wish list by someone, very generous. We have an Amazon wish list of the things we use for medications. And can you do it one-handed? I think I can do it one-handed, yeah. A little bit goes a long way with silver. Yeah. So all we need is that much. And we're just literally going to place it right on top of the wound that slightly opened after peeling out those stitches. There! And now we'll let that sit and let her heal up the rest of the way. And after that, I mean, her last antibiotic injection is tomorrow. So after that, it's just letting this wound completely heal up and then she'll be ready for adoption. Here's Miss Mary. Hi, pretty girl. Stitches are out, but she is still healing. It's been about a week since we took these out. So still a bit of a scab, so she's not ready quite yet. Look at you go and moving your little nub. But I do want to test out and see if she wants to eat her favorite food, which she had stopped eating before surgery, which meant that told us she was not feeling well. Do you? want a hornworm now. Oh! Oh! Do it! Do it! Yeah! Go Mary! Go! All right! Yeah, her appetite is definitely back. Look at you! What a good girl! Her antibiotics are done. We're just waiting for that little scab to heal. And then when it does, you'll be good to go for adoption. All right, we are at our Hastings Exotic Pet Expo and it's really loud in here because there's a lot of people. It's been a constant line, it's been awesome. And we brought Megara, the leopard gecko, in hopes that she would get adopted, which she just did by Hayden. So here's Megara and you have other leopard geckos too, right? Yep, I do. I have now because I bought two here and her. I have four of them. Oh my gosh! And, and can, can you adopted a 38, 39 year old spotted python from us yep. too. Still doing okay? Yep, he's still alive. Oh. He's gotta be 40 years old now at this point. Yeah. That's an old spot of Yeah. He's Well, you I'm sure you'll see the entire story when the video comes out. But Megara has been here a lot, but she's officially available for adoption. And I'm so glad that we found her home today. Are you gonna keep her name? I'm thinking about it, but I do like with her little tail spot. I really like the name Appa. Her avatar? Yeah. I love that. I think you should I, I like the name Appa too. I like it. Thank you for adopting her. I'm super excited to bring her home. All right, it's an exciting day because Mary is approved for adoption. And look at this girl. She's still a little bit underweight, but she has a huge appetite now that she's healed up. So we are confident that she's going to gain the rest of her weight back. How's her and, stitches look? And her stitches are healed. She just has Aww. a little bit of a scab left, but Which not much. Which will callus up because she'll be using it a lot. Yeah, she will. Yeah, that's true. It probably, I didn't even think of that. It probably will callus up. Yep. Interesting. Yeah, but she's, look at her wiggling her little stump, huh? 
Hi, pretty girl. Yeah, her little stump. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. Oh, <laughs> it's so weird. She doesn't time. know any difference. She doesn't. She's adapting really well to it too. Yep. And with being uh, available for adoption, our residence bearded dragon expert here at Snake Discovery, Lucy, is adopting Mary. So here you go. Thank you so much for adopting yeah. her. <laughs> you know I have a soft spot for the disabled ones. Yes. So what all do you have as far as bearded dragons go nowadays? Uh, bearded dragons, I have one with severe MBD, one blind one, um, and then one who likes to lay in fertile eggs all the time, so she has to be monitored with that. And then another uh, underweight one that we're fattening up. Yeah. She's so, yeah, all the so special fine. needs bearded dragons. We yeah. immediately think of Lucy because we can usually convince her to adopt the special needs ones because we and we, we know they're in good hands with you. So thank you so much for adopting her. Are you going to change your name or keep it as Mary? I don't know. We got to think about that. Ooh, okay. And this is your first silky, right? Yes. So yes. how would you describe how she feels? Because I don't know oh. how to, for people watching, I don't know how to describe it. It's soft. I mean, is it like a peach? It's... It's soft, but like she's got like weird like callusy spots. It does feel like a callus in certain areas. Yeah, it's definitely different than a snake. Yeah, a scaly snake, snake. Mm -hmm. for sure. It's rougher so. than a scaly snake, but not as soft as a leatherback. I don't know. Like, oh, hmm. there we go. So in between leatherback yeah. and scaly snake. Yeah, I like that. Perfect. Everybody has a scaly snake and a leatherback at home. So yeah. yeah, so just go touch yeah. those. Yeah, touch them both, oh and just in the middle is what a silky yeah. bearded dragon no, no, it feels like. So anyway, thank you again. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Patreon backers, because your funds paid for Mary's amputation today so you really are making a huge difference in the reptile world and helping these rescues so thank you so much patreon backers and thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you next time also really quick i just want to give another shout out and thank you to vision for donating our enclosures that house our adoption island rescues they have been working out great we have the 211s 322s and i think is it the 622 or 611 i think it's 622 but they're all working great still and we have so many adoptions here at snake discovery oh that's right we have a red-footed tortoise as of today may 3rd still have digby you need a home but yeah these are working out great so thank you again vision for these awesome enclosures